Hi, I'm Ozzy from Three Monkey Solderless, home of the world's best cable system for your pedal boards. It's just basically no tools, no wire stripping, just cut it clean and screw and go. Um, so check us out at ThreeMonkeySolderless.com. Um, so we're still, obviously we got the pedal board up and running and we were doing a bass tone um, just before regarding um, the system. And where we left off yesterday was we were going to uh, put together a sustainer guitar. So here it is all right and um we've got it done um if you wanted to know a little bit about the system itself um on, and how it's set up on this guitar we're going to go through a little bit of that but there's also a video that i did uh yesterday um that goes over you know the routing of the guitar what it looked like underneath here um the circuit card what's hooked up to what and stuff but we'll be going over that a little bit more today too as well um, so we wanted to find out, is this the right solution for creating that feedback loop that's present in a studio um, when you're playing in a live room with a very loud amp, which is, you know, part of the, the secret of getting in a really good uh, guitar tones, right, is that you want to have all these kinds of things, um, you know, interacting with one another. So this uh, gives you a sort of like a, a local feedback network in order to, um, you know, give you uh, your sound. Um, so let's just go ahead and give a demonstration of, of what it sounds like. So, um, this is without the sustainer off on, obviously. So we, we get, see, we've got, um, let's say we're going to play this sort of like thing. versus playing it this way, let's say. Right? Now what we've got is um, something that works, right? I mean, this thing does um, give you a tremendous amount of sustain. Basically what you have is your on off switch here and you have your, um, let's say the harmonic, let's call it the harmonic switch, but basically allows for like the octave up or, a, 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 you know, an above harmonic for the sustained note to change into versus just holding the note that you play. So I'll, I'll give you a, a quick demonstration of that, see if I can get the guitar into the picture. But um, all right, so no sustainer, sustainer on, right? So it holds. And then if you flip it. So it is. Kind of fun to play around with, right? But um, it does present a solution and it does present a couple of problems. And that's where what we're going to talk about right now. All right. Now, the sound of the guitar um, being that this is sort of how the um, I drew up these little uh, more of my ridiculous um, sort of, you know, uh, diagrams here. So you can see what we're talking about. All right, so this is sort of how the whole thing is set up right now, okay? So you basically have your humbucker, right? A dummy, that middle thing is just an empty, you know, just an empty shell, there's nothing in there. And then the driver up in the neck position. And you have the humbucker connected to the sustainer board, which then is connected to the driver. The driver excites the strings and it goes back to the humbucker. And then the output, that goes to the amplifier comes from the sustainer board through your volume control, right? And then goes out to your um, to your amplifier. So basically, I think you could tell from this one issue, right? That we have the humbucker is going through the sustainer board, right? To, and it affects the tone of the pickup. There's no question about it. Um, I played the guitar without the unit set in there and with the unit set in there. And and I got to say that the, the tone is different. And in maybe in my opinion, other people, you know, 
you can build something for a purpose and you can use it within its purpose and it'll be great. But I felt that the tone change was detrimental to what I wanted to hear, right? Um, it's too much of, a, of an affected sort of note. Um, it sort of gets a little bit distorted sounding, which, you know, Fernandez does talk about being a problem with the board or a normal issue with the board. Um, and the distortion to my ear is not very pleasing. So I wanted to find or I want to find a way around that. And I have two ideas that we're going to check out. We're going to uh, try to implement maybe one or maybe both. But here's a, I drew up some diagrams of what we're sort of going to do. Um, the first one is... Uh, the simpler of the solution, and it may not be the best solution, but this is uh, probably a simpler solution. We have our little diagram here again. Um, and what we're, what we're going to do in this case is replace the dummy coil with a actual stacked single coil humbucker, something along the lines of, um, you know, like a, um, a tone zone or a super distortion stacked, right? Something with a lot of output, something that can provide a heavy signal to the sustainer board and not give it any noise in terms of, you know, um, let's say like, you know, a single coil would present a lot of hum and a lot of other things which can, you know, maybe cause the unit to uh, excite the strings in odd ways. So we're, we'll do that. And then that will drive the driver, obviously, um, and then the humbucker will not be connect, will not be connected in any way whatsoever. Um, let me put this back up here so you can see it will not be connected in any way whatsoever to the sustainer board. It'll just go traditionally to a volume control and out. So again, we'll have a just sort of, let's say a dummy driver. It won't be going out of the guitar ever. It'll, the stacked humbucker will be driving through the sustainer board, the driver, and then that will excite the strings, which the humbucker will obviously pick up. And then it'll go out of the guitar without passing through the sustainer board, which in my opinion should lead to, you know, a better sound or at least one that you're used to, right? It's, it just changes the sound in my opinion, too much of the pickup. Um, all right. So then, then the next idea I think is a really cool idea um, to implement as well. Now, what is being driven here is obviously the sound of the strings itself that's driving the pickup, right? So it's not so much um, that the amplifier, the sound of the amplifier in terms of how it is tailored, the waveform is, is all right. In a, no, in a normal feedback situation, you have this, the sound pressure from the speakers vibrating the guitar, and then the strings vibrate sympathetically to the, what the cabinet is producing, right? It's not vibrating sympathetically to what the guitar is producing primarily, but more so that's, that's kind of sustain is coming from the amp. So what I figured the other idea to do would be to, um, let me get out my sheet here, um, would be to connect or build the guitar in such a way with a second jack on the guitar, let's say down in the lower bout, um, someplace where it's out of the way. Um, and what would happen is you would have um, a, still a dummy coil in the middle, the driver alone, and then the sustainer board would be connected to that second jack. And we'll call that not an output jack, but an input jack, okay? And then the humbucker will be going out of the guitar in traditional fashion being, you know, through a volume pot, the jack, and then off to your amp, right? Now, what are we going to do with this secondary jack? Well, as I see it, we'll connect it probably to the output of the impulse response unit, okay? So what we'll end up having is the a split here at the IR pedal, right? And that will have a cable that'll come out and enter the guitar, right, through a jack that we may mount here, and then that will be connected to the sustainer board, which will be driving the driver. So that way we'll have the amplifier in a sense, exciting the strings as opposed to the other pickup. And it could produce some, some interesting, you know, different colorations that um, will be noticeably um, apart from what we've got right now. So that's what I think we're going to try those two experiments um, over the next couple of days. Uh, and, and see how all that works out. So we're going to have a little bit of fun with the, uh, with the sustainer guitar and see how that comes in, uh, in into play with this. Um, the other thing I should talk about is we did um, change the IR response from the last time. Uh, the last video, um, 
there was a different IR than today. Today we were using it still. It's a JBL, a Celestian, a direct, and then some J, um, Celestian room mic sounds. So I think it sounds a little bit more natural. Um, it's a little bit less in your face. It's a little bit softer, let's say, a little less trebly. Um, so tell me what you think about that. Um, but we're not going to be able to, unfortunately, change the impulse response for a little while. A little while. When I was pulling or removing the uh, USB cable from the unit um, yesterday when I was changing the impulse response, the port inside the Hot One unit actually came out along with the cable. So... Um, that's that's a minus, right? As far as I'm concerned, for the design of the Hot One unit, they they put a USB port basically as a surface mount component on a circuit card. It wasn't attached to the chassis. It wasn't attached to anything substantial in the board. It was literally just attached to traces. So um, I think that's going to be a problem with these units. So I've got to call in to see if I could get a replacement, but I might have to, if I do get a replacement, I might just sell that one and look for another one because although the unit works really well, uh, that's a definite fatal flaw that to, to mount something that's a port that you're going to be having some kind of pressure with pushing things in and pulling things out and have it only sitting on a circuit card soldered to very fine traces and that's what's holding it on the board, in my opinion, is just not the way to do it. So anyway, um, we're going to go ahead and uh, do some more modifications to our sustainer guitar and see how that works out for us. But tell me what you think about the new IR, the new setup, and uh, we'll continue on with the product. So project rather. So um, once again, uh, thanks for watching and we'll uh, see you next time.